My name is Professor Philip Mitchell and I'm Head of the School of Psychiatry at the University of New South Wales and I'm a Professorial Fellow in the Black Dog Institute. I've been increasingly interested in bipolar disorder um, over the last decade or so. So I'm now starting to focus on studies of young people at high risk for bipolar. I've been very aware that, say for example in general medicine, if you have heart disease, these days we pick it up early, we look at risk factors. We don't wait till you've had a heart attack. In bipolar disorder, currently we only make the diagnosis when somebody has a manic episode. And by that stage, it's already starting to impair the individual, causing you know, the effect on self-esteem, those sort of issues. So what we're interested in is identifying the early features before someone develops full-blown bipolar. So the way we're doing that is we're looking at individuals who have a parent or a sibling with well-established bipolar, and we know they're at very high risk for the developing the illness. So we're doing detailed assessments on them, genetic, brain imaging, clinical, and we're following them up every year to see who develops bipolar and if we could identify early who's going to be at particular high risk. The main reason is that we want to be able to, in the future, intervene early for people with bipolar so we don't have to wait till they have the first manic episode because we think that intervening early will reduce the disability and the impact of the illness. Um, we've had some very interesting findings in the first few years of our study of the Kids and SIB study. We found that the young people at risk, even though none of them currently have bipolar, that there are differences in their brain imaging. Uh, we find that the way that they respond to emotional tasks is different and that the brain activity is different to young people who come from families without any history of mental illness. And in addition to that, we're finding genetic differences. Worldwide, we were one of the study groups in a big international consortium that identified risk genes to bipolar disorder in people who already have that condition. Now, what we've found in the KIDS and SIP study is that when you look at the young people who are at risk for bipolar, you find that their genetic profile is different. They're more likely to have these bipolar risk genes than the general community. And no one's shown that before. So this is an exciting finding. It's early days, but with our genetic and imaging results, we're hoping in the future that we can develop a profile to say, you know, a young person may be at high risk, may be at low risk, and that will aid us in making decisions about who perhaps to train in you know, better being able to develop resilience to stress um, so that we can reduce the chance of those children developing bipolar in the future.